I'm Lori Pillingsrinker, marketing and brand strategist with Brands That Deliver. I help clients grow their revenues and their brands and help them give back. I'm doing a blog and a video really highlighting companies that deliver profits, quadruple bottom line, and give back and impact society. Today I have with me Helen Russell, who is the CEO and co-founder of Equator Coffees. They're a B Corporation started in 1995 in right here in Marin County. You know, I met Helen a couple years ago mm -hmm. at the local Venture Pad where she was speaking on Equator Coffees. And I was so inspired and impressed with the brand, your values, your chain of well-being, mm -hmm. and just what Equator stands for. Tell us a little bit about how you started and why you started. Laurie, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Welcome to our new headquarters here in uh, San Anselmo, California. And I remember that evening when uh, we spoke. I also remember the time that we met at the Equator <laughs> Coffees at the surf shop uh, at Proof Lab. Um, you know, Brooke and I started this company in 1995. We were in our early 30s, and uh, prior to that, we were we had two coffee bars. And prior to that, we were um, working up in the Northwest. Uh, flipping houses unbelievably and saw the whole <laughs> specialty coffee thing happening and uh, prior to that I was selling voice and data networks for MCI so Brooke and I were sitting in Pioneer Square in uh, Portland uh, and she was having an espresso and I was having a, a mocha pile tie with uh, whipped cream and and uh, Brooke was telling me all about the flavor that she was experiencing ah. and I said I'm gonna go get some more whipped cream but it, I came back and I said look you know what you love coffee and I love business and that's what you think about when you're in your early 30s especially um, here in the United States where, you know, the American dream is uh, starting your own company. So growing up in Boston as a blue collar kid to be able to come out to California and really realize that. So Brooke and I wrote a business plan literally on the back of a napkin right. <laughs> and went, down, went back to uh, San Francisco uh, and opened up two coffee bars called Europa. But the pivotal point there was nobody would tell Brooke anything about the coffee. Hmm. Brooke really wanted to know about the elevation of you know, uh, the mountains where the coffee was grown, the potassium in the soil, more importantly, wow. how the, you know, how the folks on the land were being paid. So when they wouldn't tell her any of that, she said, look, I want to roast coffee. And Brooke traveled around the world as a child. She has an amazing palate. So here we are, 1995, in a garage in Corte Madeira. There's only five women that are roasting coffee in the United States. Wow. And Brooke is one of them. Hmm. And we start this company, and I said, look, we'll do this for about three or four years, and if not, then we'll have to get jobs. <laughs> so here we are. You jobs. Know, <laughs> jobs. I'm like, oh my God, that would be the worst thing. I'm so unemployable that I would get a job. So fast forward now, we have uh, eight retail stores. We're opening up three next year, 155 employees. We're roasting in Northern wow, California, Southern great. California, in New York. We're a B Corp. Um, I think what we're most proud of is that 155 of our employees have uh, full health insurance. So that's something that, and I get goosebumps thinking about it because we built that into the business plan and we've never moved away from it. That is amazing. And I want to I want to get into the B Corp thing yes, in a second. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk about how you develop this beautiful brand of yours. The name, the yeah. logo, the colors. Well, as you can see, we love the color red, right? As you can see, I love red and we love black. and. Brooke actually came up with the name Equator because coffee and tea is actually grown along the equator. Uh -huh. And uh, we came up with the Bengal Tiger, as you see, um, as our brand icon. Beautiful. Because we are women-owned and we wanted something that sort of projected grace, rarity, and power. Ooh. And we felt like the Bengal Tiger did that. And part of what we have now to honor the Bengal Tiger, and you've been in our stores, uh, we pay a five cent social premium to the Tiger Trust. So all the coffee that we buy some, from Sumatra, and it's over 300,000 um, pounds, we pay a 10 cent social premium and we have rangers out there to decouple the traps. So when uh, folks come into our stores and the kids come in, I put little tigers on their jackets. And I, I have a tiger them, on my tigers, I do. And I tell them that story and it just, it just resonates with them. And it's something we're so proud of that we can do. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. Well, let's talk a little bit about I mentioned that Helen was a B Corporation. And let's talk a little bit about what a B Corporation yep. is and how it impacts how you operate the business and your finances and growth. You know, B Corp was something that it was natural for us to be involved in. B Corp is a certification, just like an organic fair trade. Um, there's 200 uh, questions that you have to take. 
Uh, Maureen mm. McHugh, who's our um, executive vice president and has a master's degree in sustainability, you know, I said to Maureen, probably, I think we've been a B Corp now since 2010, perhaps? Great. Um, we were actually the first coffee company in California, and I was so impressed with Patagonia becoming a B Corp. Yeah. B Corp is really about social, environmental, uh, economic impact, and it's a way to measure where you are as a company. And here we were, I was thinking we were doing all these great things, supporting our employees, paying a fair price for coffee, uh, the, the purveyors that we buy, espresso equipment and all those things, how we're treating our employees, how we're treating our customers. And so your farmers. And of course our farmers. And we'll tell the story a little bit later about how we own our own farm now and what we've learned over the last, oh my God, 10 years about owning our own farm. Truly a labor of love. But this allowed us to measure, right? This allowed us to take a measurement. So Maureen took the score and we just made an 80. I was like, oh my God, we're only an 80? We need to do better than that. So. We, look, we went back and we sort of thought, you know, talked about, Brooke and I and Maureen talked about how we can do more on the social side, the environmental side, and the impact side. And we were one of the first roasters to actually um, buy a, um, what's called a Loring Smart Roast, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually manufactured here in Petaluma, where it uses 80% less natural gas than oh, other roasters. Oh, that's great. So we've had a lot of firsts that we've been able to sort of bring into the company and be able to tell that story because people want the story. Right, customers want the story. I and you've got a great one. And we've got <laughs> we've got a great story and we've you know, over thank you very much for that. But over the years we've so many people have said, People don't know that. You need to tell more of that. And I think that's part of being founder led, right? You're extremely humble, you've got your head down, you're working, and then as you grow the company and you bring more folks into the company and they're like we should tell that story. I think that would resonate. So I tell stories when I'm in front of folks, but I think now, um, you know, sort of adopting that chain of well-being where it's all really about stakeholder value, from the farmer right to the farmer's gate, out to the export and the importer, into our own roasting facility, and right into the cup. You know, so we call it the chain of well-being. It's something that I talked about early on that just resonated with me. You know, stakeholder value brilliant. is very different than shareholder value, mm -hmm. right? And shareholder value is about, which is great because I'm, you know, look, I'm a capitalist. I think it's really, really important to make money so you can do more things. We think about being profitable so we can do more things for other people. Absolutely. Right? If we can help our employees get their needs met, they're going to get the needs met of our customers. And it's just, it's just good business. And being a B Corp, you know, I remember I was interviewed about being a B Corp and they're like, well, a lot of people are afraid to become a B Corp because they feel as if, you know, they're not going to be as profitable. However. <laughs> However, I mean, that's just not the case. I mean, we are a triple bottom line company that we have great top line, we have great, um, you know, earnings, and we have an opportunity to continue to grow this business um, in a very, very competitive environment. As you know, there's a lot of great coffee companies. Now in there the are Bay four area. ways to they evaluate you. There's four pillars of the B Corp. Do you remember what? Well, it's definitely social, mm -hmm. right? It's really sort of what your impact is, how you're taking care of your employees, how you're taking care of your your farmers, environmental. What are you doing on the ground? So when we right. think about what we're doing at the roastery, for example, I mean, having an energy efficient roaster is number one. We were definitely trailblazers on that. And economic, how do we pay our people? How do we pay a fair price for the coffee that we purchase? Yeah. So within all of those, there's probably four or five pillars for each one of them, right? And we try to examine each pillar and do the best that we can. I mean, the company is, you know, when we think about our mission statement, um, you know, to champion uh, kindness and connection through the portal of coffee. Mm -hmm. So the portal of coffee can be at the farmer's gate. Mm -hmm. Or it can be at you know the threshold coming into our stores. That's great, right? And being able to tell that that story to our customers, who are on the wholesale side, whether it be a LinkedIn, a Twitter, or a Google, and the guests that come in, you know, whether they're three years old, nine years old, or they're with their families and their grandmothers, and um, so it's about that portal of coffee and telling that story about human connection and kindness and being kind is how you pay for coffee. You have to pay a fair price for coffee, right? So people can put back into their own, their own land and stay on their land and have opportunities. So we tell that story. If I'm sitting down with a wholesale customer like a Chef Thomas Keller of the French Laundry or I'm sitting down with a Google, right, at a tech company or LinkedIn, it's really important to tell that story because it goes through all the noise. And people 
want to do the right thing and they want to pay the right price. Do you know that 50% of the consumers will pay more for a product or a brand if they have some kind of direct impact in the community? Yeah, I, and I 90 know that that's 90% will choose a brand over another brand if they have some kind of cause associated with yeah. that brand. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's not why you do it, but that's there are some side benefits. That's not why we do it, but it is real, though. That is real. We do it because it appeals to our heart and minds. Well, right? let, that's let's how we talk are as about... A, as a company and as a people. Let's talk... Sorry, I didn't mean to step on no, you. Let's right. talk about all the different ways that you give back, and it's a lot. So maybe we can just top line some of it, and do go on the website if you want to learn more. There's so much that Equator Coffees does for impact. And we, and we do it because we're fortunate enough to have a customer base that buys coffee from us. I mean, if we weren't able to sell our coffee, we wouldn't be able to do half of the things that we do. So what we've really, what we've done over the years, especially on the retail side, remember retail is only six years old. And having a retail business where you're actually in a store and talking to people, talking to our guests about what's important to them. And that's how I learned about the World Bicycle Relief which is for $146, we can purchase a bike that goes to a community in Africa where young women on their way to school can feel protected to go through to school, you know, bands of young boys on the sides, they can get to school. And then on the way home, they can get home earlier, they can study, and then they can also do chores and, and get water to pick up. So very, very passionate about that because the cycling community has built our business. And I've since become a cyclist and Good uh, for you. the camaraderie <laughs> and the community and the folks that want to uh, make an impact, they get it. The World Bicycle Relief is just one thing. So I'm on the advisory board for that. Of course, you know, the Sumatra, the Tiger Trust, that's super important. How we buy coffee from, you know, I was in Rwanda in April and I met with uh, the Niaminga Women's Cooperative and I went up there and they had our name in the clay. These women waited <laughs> out in the sun for me to arrive, I, I, I couldn't get over it. And then um, the president of the cooperative, she was so amazing, she was looking at my uh, bracelet and I said, would you like this? And she, she wore it, she said, I will wear this forever. Oh, so Helen. it's just, it's these <laughs> connections, right? These amazing connections with the supply and the people that are on the ground. That is the, I think, the essence of our brand. It's about human connection. You know, we don't speak to our customers as a brand. We speak to them as friends. Mm -hmm. And friends want to hear what you're doing. I feel and how that. you're making an impact. And that's what we try to do every day. You know, when you think about the pillars of, the four pillars that Equator sits on, it's really about being conscious, which is the pillar of being a B Corp and really understanding all the needs of the stakeholders and telling that story. So yeah, we're gonna charge a little bit more for our coffee. There's no doubt about it. We're gonna be 25 cents higher, but people will pay that when they And know. I did and once I heard the story. Honestly, the story. I wasn't gonna pay, you know, whatever. But when I heard the story, I thought I will pay because they're doing the right thing in the world. And that's why I believe Equator Coffees is the poster company going forward the way companies that should be. Yeah. Let's talk about you. next step and growth. What's happening and what are some of your challenges? Well, growth is super, you know, growth is really important. Always the challenge is going to be competition, uh -huh. how you differentiate yourselves. Um, getting Can we the, talk about that a little bit? Competition? How you're different, how are you different from those other coffee that's a really, shops? That's a really good question because there are so many great coffee companies in the Bay Area. There are some wonderful third wave coffee companies. And I think what we're able to do is we really put the community um, really at top of the brand. Not that others don't, but we can all buy great coffee, right? We all buy great coffee. But what's different about Equator? What's different is what matters to our customers. Some people love that we have health insurance. I will go down to our Mill Valley store, which is the heart and soul of the company, and there'll be a line out the door, and I'll see customers say, Helen, this line, and I'll say, everybody has health insurance, please stay in line. They're like, all right. It's a great scene. So down they there. stay in line. They stay in line for it because we have health insurance. Um, they, they stay in line because they know, you know we are a B Corp and they know how that's important and they want to they want to come to a company that is making a difference 
They just want to support that. We have a group that comes every, every day. There's 12 of them that come. They call it the Church of Equator, and they sit there, and they say, you need to tell more people about what you're doing. So we put a poster. Here we, we are. We put a poster <laughs> that we were, were a benefit corporation, that we're a B Corp. That's a great idea, by the way. I think you have to, you have to tell people about who you are. You have to, um, I, don't, I don't like to say toot your own horn, but there, if there's an opportunity where you can tell your story, you need to take it. And obviously today I'm telling that story. It's good branding it's, to share your story, great, the it's truth. It's great branding to tell what is the personality of that brand, right? right? Who are we? We're just human beings. We're on this planet for a short period of time. And if we can provide an incredible experience, not only for you know our customers, our employees, and have the bar set very, very high, as this is, we're not perfect, but our intentions are perfect. You know, you have to have a great product. That's like, that's the bottom line. But you have to have a story. People want the story. It's not what you do, it's why you do it. Why do I get up every day for the last 25 years working seven days a week? I get up on a Saturday morning and I'm like, I've got eight stores. Which one do I go to first? <laughs> You know, because I want to see these people, because right. I want to, I want to thank them for their business. I want to carry a baby around while someone's getting a waffle. I want to put a blanket on them. I want to let them know that we are grateful for their business. We want to be a part of their community, and how important that is, because everybody has so many options, and it's authentic. There's an authenticity with our brand that I can't. People, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to uh, articulate it. I think we're getting it. Yeah. Helen, I, I think it's part of your branding. I think it's part of your story. You have a new website. I think you've rolled that out beautifully. Yes. And part of what we're here today is to share the story. And again, as I said earlier, you are the poster child for me, the way I want the kind of companies I want to be working with as a brand mm -hmm. strategist. Yeah. And also modeling young for young entrepreneurs. So that leads me to my next question. What advice do you have to give to a young entrepreneur or an old older entrepreneur? You know, it's, um, you know, I, being an entrepreneur is, you know, I call it, um, when I think about the acronym, I call it the FIDO principle, right? Um, you have to be extremely focused. Um, you don't, you know, unbelievably, you don't have to be that intelligent. You need to be <laughs> fairly intelligent, right? I was a C student. Uh, worked really, really hard to get through college, paid for it. A coffee student? Or is <laughs> <laughs> I say that, but actually did quite well. But, um, and you have to be 100% driven, right? And you have to be an optimist. And you have to hire people that know more than you. I mean, I have no issue with people knowing more than I. If I can't get up every day and learn something, then I feel like I've had, had a great day, mm -hmm. right? So, and then the other thing is, which a lot of entrepreneurs make the mistake, is that to be successful as an entrepreneur, there has to be three components. It's people, product, and process. I happen to be the people, right? I'm the salesperson, that's easy to tell. Yeah. Brooke is the product, mm -hmm. right? Brooke is the product. She's the one that we're gonna sit in front of Chef Dominic Crenn. The palate. Well, she has the palate. You know, she has the wisdom. She has the intelligence. She can tell you about the potassium. She can tell you about the cloud cover. And then you have to have the processes and the operations which is um, super, super important. I mean, you have to sell it, you have to create it, and you have to bill for it. <laughs> you have to get it out the and door. And then deliver the brand over and, and over. Deliver the brand over and over. Right. You have to, I mean, there's so many things that you need to have. I mean, you know, people talk about, oh, you need a bank, you need this. You need three people. There's a lot of people that make great chocolate, but they're selling it, they're giving it out to their family because there's nobody to sell it, and there's nobody to invoice for mm -hmm. it. So people, product, and products is super, super important. And you know, you got to give it a shot. You got to be, you got to be driven. And I love being an entrepreneur because let, let's face it, you're going to work 100 hours a week regardless whether you're working for somebody else or working for yourself. So the mm. fact that I've been able to, with you know, with my partner and my best friend in life, to be able to build a business, I'm so so proud of it. And you know, like every other entrepreneur, it's like every day you think there must be more I can do. This is somebody else I can call. Um, but I think what I like most now about being where I am is sort of now moving into this chairwoman role is the excitement that I get when I go to the store. I was at the surf shop. and It's in a, Mill Valley. It's in Mill Valley at Tam Junction. It's such a great story. You know, when La Boulangerie, six years ago, was purchased by Starbucks, $1.1 million fell out of the checkbook. 
And Brooke said to me, you know, we're going to get into retail. And I said, retail? We haven't been in retail in 15, 16 years. I can't get up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> She's like, no, not you. <laughs> People like Devorah can get up at 4.30 in the morning. So I went down to Proof Lab and I met with Will and Nate, who are the founders of Proof uh -huh. Lab, which is a very successful Very surf cool shop. shop. Very and, cool. You know, and Will is just such an engaging young man. So we're walking around. He says, you know, I really would like to put a coffee shop here, but I don't drink coffee. And I'm looking around. And I said, you know what, Will? I don't surf. But together, we're going to build something really special. So I spent a year and a half down there telling our story. And first year, it did $1.1 million worth of business. That's amazing. Which was amazing. That's amazing. And this woman was sitting there. And she was in her 70s. And she was a part-time teacher. And she's sitting there having coffee. And I come through. And there's a gentleman sitting next to her in a tank top with his hair blowing. And he's having a coffee. And the surfboards are up. And people are coming in because they're going to go out surfing. And so she said, are you the owner? And I said, yeah. She said, I just want to let you know, I love it here. She said, I feel so good here. You know, I feel part of this community. And that told me something that was a big signal because it's so important for people to be comfortable. We think of our brand literally as a Katy Perry concert. Whether you're three <laughs> or 83, you're going to feel good in here. Okay. You're going to feel a part of the community that we have built. You have a place with us. We meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're standing at the threshold, we bring them in. And I'll put my arm around them and I'll sit them down. It's amazing. Well, Helen, thank you so, so much for coming. I just, again, I'm, thank you for I'm coming. even more impressed with Equator and the chain of well being that really impacts our community locally and worldwide, so I thank you so very much. Thank you so much. And check out the blog and the video on Equator on my site, Brands That Deliver, and I'm Lori Pillings-Rinker. Thank you.